Hey guys, Miss Pariso here. Um, as you know, while on JA, this is kind of all the stuff that we are going to be working on. So there is one part that I didn't really talk too much about, and I just want to make sure that everyone heard the information. So I'm in the Unit 7 Exponents tab. This is like the to-do list that's posted on Moda on my website. It's also at the bottom down here. You see JA Week Study Session. And um, basically everything from six all the way down is just extra resources there for you. Now I went ahead and added in a couple more problems. So like the this word problem 7A is actually, if you were in class with me, we're doing it as a warm up. Um, <clears throat> so what I wanted to do was actually talk about in 7B. So it's, it, it builds off of 7A. So let's gonna take a look at this right now. Um, all right, so we want to know about this. The opening question here is really just asking, you know, he hit 18 home runs in 2009. In 2011, he hit six home runs. How many times more? So here, this is that key phrase. How many times more? Not how much more, how many times more? So that means that we are going to, so how many times more? So what times the amount in 2011 did he hit in 2009. So essentially we need to use division. Okay, divide to find the answer. All right, so 18 divided by, oops, six equals three. So, right, so he, so Derek Jeter hit three times as many home runs in 2009 as he did in 2011, all right? <clears throat> so he hit more in 2009, three times as many, all right? So basically to determine how many times larger one amount, and it doesn't even matter if it's in scientific notation or not, like I'm actually gonna cross that part out. Like who cares if it's in scientific notation? It's just to, to determine how many times larger one amount is than the other, you are going to go ahead and you're going to divide the larger amount by the smaller amount, All right? I mean, that's how you figure out how many times, how many times more. So don't confuse it with the subtraction problem, All right? So in this first example here, I'm going to try to write on the screen, but I don't have one of those stylus thingy more bubbers that it works so well. So let's try this out. Okay, so it's asking how many times larger is the world population? That was a horrible straight, not straight line. All right, so obviously the world population is larger. We can see by the exponent. Boop, right? So how many times larger? Well, let's go ahead. That's kind of okay. This is a bad one. I'm going to buy my own stylus. Three. Because we're saying how many times do I have to multiply the U.S. to get the world population? So that's a division problem. Okay. That's a nine and that's an eight. FYI. So we need to go ahead and, oops. Why did, where, where did my drawing go? Okay. 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 Hold on. We got this. We got this. I'll change to blue. All right. We need to divide these numbers. So we're going to get two point three, three, repeating, and we're gonna get times 10 to the first. Well, we wanna make sure we understand what that means, okay? Well, 10 to the first means just multiply that by 10. So that, why? Why does it do that? My goodness, okay, trying it again. So if we were to rewrite that, it's like 23.3 repeating. So it's about 23 times, right? The world population is 23 times bigger than the United States. So if we took the population of the United States and multiplied by 23, we would roughly get the world population. That's what it's asking. We, we normally would not leave these in scientific notation. All right, let's take a look at another one. Um, I don't like that one. We're gonna skip that one, okay? All right, uh, don't worry about the bronze, that kind of stuff, it was a ranking thing. So the diameter of the moon is approximately this. The diameter of Earth is approximately this. How many times larger, okay, it's not on draw again, not really sure why. How many times larger is the diameter of Earth 
than the moon. So it's telling you that the Earth is larger. And again, we can see that because of the exponent. And I'm, I'm catching on to you, machine, that you keep taking my pen away. So we're going to do 1.295 times, wow, okay, we're going to, 1, 2, 9, okay, I have better luck just with my, let's just do this, not a problem, I'm adapting, okay, 1 point, this is using a mouse pad, so bear with me, 1.2, Nine five times ten. I I'm trying to I need to learn how to work a split screen so I could have like my paper. I'm a paper person. I prefer paper than doing this on the computer. Three point five. Oh, for obvious reasons. Okay. All right. Now let's just kind of use some estimation here. All right. Um. If I'm looking at this, uh, I'm going to kind of just estimate right here. 1.2 divided by 3, right? That's roughly 0 0.4 times, and I'm doing that because I have, um, because I have multiple choice. So I can, it helps me narrow things down. Now I can't times 10 to the first. All right, so that's roughly, again, if it's to the first, that means it's gonna be, move it over about four times. Well, the only one that's close to that is D. So do you see how I did not have to actually do the full on division, especially since I had multiple choice answers. That is a great test taking strategy, okay? All right, we'll do one more together, just to even see if this video is working. All right, let's see, we have radioactive decay, that's the name of the isotope. Some very fancy chemistry looking stuff happening on here. Um, I know that those are from the periodic table. That's all I know. Um, and then this is apparently is their half-life, which I do, don't ask me. I forget all that information. All right, so we have their half-life. How many times longer is rubidium than potassium? So where's rubidium? We gotta take the bigger one and divide it by the smaller one. So there's potassium, there's rubidium. All right, so we're gonna basically 4.9 divided by 4.9 divided by 1.3. I'm gonna go ahead and go boop, boop, 1.3. Now remember, you gotta move the decimal over one place, so the new decimal's here. Move that one over, play fair. So we're gonna do that, lock in my decimal, all right, 13 times 4 is 52, so that is too big, so we need to go, or is it 42? No, that's right, 52, so 39, and because there's no multiple choice, I do have to do the math out on this one. We're going to subtract, this is hard, bring down a 0, because I can't line up all my stuff, all right, 13 goes into 100. Oh, 13 times 5 is 85. Plus another 13 is 98. That works, so 6. That is not right, and it's not 85, Miss Paris, so you cray-cray. That is just silliness there. I'm not sure what math I'm doing in my head. This is why Miss Paris doesn't do math in her head. Okay, 13 times 9 is too big. 13 times 8, we're going to go with 13 times 7. Work our way backwards here. Seven, aha, that's it, 91. All right, I'm running out of room. Can I just scroll? Nope, that, just kidding, doesn't wanna let me scroll up, that's fine. Now it does. Okay, go back to my draw. All right, so then we get nine. We bring down another zero. Okay, 91 was seven. That's going to be too big, so we know that's going to be a 6. 78. Oh, that's going to be a 12. I wish they would tell you. Okay, I'm never, uh, this will eventually clean up, but okay. We're going to go with 9 is too big. It's going to be an 8. 104. 
Oh no, just kidding, it'll be a nine. Nine. That's one, one, seven. Okay, and it's just gonna keep going. So we're gonna stop right there. So 3.769, and it's gonna keep going, but for our, our sake, times 10, and it's 10 minus nine to the 10 to the first. So it's approximately 37. It doesn't tell us where to round, so we could say it's 37.6. If we had to round to the nearest hole, maybe it's 38. I'm not really sure what they're going for. But because it says approximately, as long as we're showing our work. Okay, so it's 38 times longer. All right, so you, you get the idea there. So I would try out a couple of these. Now, if you, if you went ahead and scrolled, okay, towards the bottom. Oh, I forgot there is an answer key. Some of these are a little bit more than what we would do. Um, they're just there to help you out. Um, you can see like by the level gold, it's just getting a little bit more challenging. That's all. Um, but those basic ones are what I'm going to be looking for. And here we go. Okay, look. Look, yay, we did it right. These are 38 times. Would have been nice if they gave us a little bit closer of an estimate that they wanted. All right, so the answers are at the very end. So same thing for how many times bigger here. Um, you've got a couple of questions. Uh, with one of them is a multiple choice. Just kind of break it down and there's an answer key. Then these ones, the, the word problem ones, you've got a mix of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, um, uh, area, perimeter, that kind of stuff. So I would just make sure that you try a couple and then the answer keys are all there so you can see the work and you can see how well you did and also if there's any teacher challenges. And then for those of you that people that um, like an actual study sheet, just to kind of an extra place to check your work, there is the study guide. I went ahead and crossed off the 57, 8, and 9. We don't need to know that, um, but everything else you do. And there's an answer key for that too. Okay, so there it is. Alrighty. Okay, so let me go back to our study session. Make sure that you're working through this. Um, check my website. There's going to be another quick check for a round two in case you already did round one. All right. Hopefully this video worked and I'll see you in class on Friday.